school district in southern Illinois, they have drivers park buses near local parks between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. every Monday through Friday, and they have a hot spot in the bus. So the students can go up near that bus and get their work. Now, some other things you might be able to do as a teacher, because you might not have the capability of setting up hot spots for people. Um, you can create file upload feature in Google Forms. Uh, one of the question options in Google Forms is to create a file upload, and that allows uh, students to work on podcasts, videos, journals, infographics, and simply submit them to their teacher through the form. When they don't have internet access, they can still work. And Google, in just just like last month, uh, released a blog, and I'll have it up on at the end of this video, on how students can continue using their Chromebooks and G Suite for education, even if they don't have the internet. <clears throat> so that's another option. Another thing you can do, you can host video sessions, but not require attendance or you can require attendance but have the student or students without access uh, call in. Or you can even make transcripts. Google Docs has a feature, a voice typing feature that uh, you could use and create a document and get that document somehow to the student so they know what that was about. Now let's say they have no device or no internet. Another, another issue. Well, again, you can call. Calling is still available to many people even if they don't have internet uh, or if they just even have a landline. You can consider the option of hard copy of books, getting them uh, what might be in your school library to, to assist them in what they're doing. Remember also just free reading is a very effective education tool, having them read what they have in the house, uh, maybe report on that or anything. It, it increases their comprehension, it improves their fluency, there's a lot to that. Of course there's the limitation that libraries are closed so they might not have a lot of access to books, but perhaps they have something. Have the students interview people, ask questions, write up a report about Grandpa, write up a report about how mom does her work, all kinds of things. Uh, if you're going to do that, create a question focus, make a lot of questions, improve your questions, strategize and reflect. That gets them thinking about that whole process. Um, there is a, a group you can find online called retrievalpractice.org that has a lot of uh, a lot of activities just involving things they've already learned. Bring it up again, do a little spiraling, uh, all kinds of things. There's, and I'll have, again, I'll have at the end of this video, I'll have a, a link you can go to. And uh, they have a lot, multiple videos on retrieval practice, uh, brain dumping, <clears throat> a lot of different things. They can also teach someone else and report on that. Maybe they teach their little brother. Maybe they teach their dad something. They have to go through the process, as you know, of learning what it is, how they're going to get it across, and then they document the whole thing. Another thing they can do is learning to be still. Sounds funny, I know. But learning to clear their mind, however, you may teach that. Meditation simply counting, whatever you want to use, can be a very valuable skill for students. Uh, I can think of one of many examples in my own life. I was moving at one time and I was trying to get everything into a storage unit. And I was having a hard time fitting it all. I was hot. I just couldn't seem to get it. I was getting very frustrated. So I just stopped and I ate my sandwich and I just sat there and I kind of let my mind wander for a while. And then it came to me because I let my mind go. I, I uncluttered it. And learn, having students learn that too is another great option. So I hope some of those ideas help you. And 
good luck. It's tough out there, especially if your students don't have the access. Hang in there, teachers.